Welcome back. Welcome back. For the next 12 months, a bit less now, negotiators and leaders from Israel and Palestine will be locked in peace talks. Already many observers have written off the process as a waste of time. But is it? Could this be a real chance of peace after all? Well, in a moment, I'll be talking to the former Palestinian presidential candidate, Mustafa Barghouti. Uh, but first, joining me here in the studio, welcome back to the former U.S. ambassador to Israel, Martin Indyk. Welcome back indeed, Thank Martin. Thank you, David. Um, in your very recent article in the uh, New York Times, in terms of hope and so on, um, you indicated, because when I talked to other people about a two-state solution, Gaza is, is left out of it, as it were, and no solution is, is proffered. But you think there is a way that Gaza could come into this peace process if, if you get through the first stage of the two states? Yeah, it's important to understand that, that the issues are all West Bank and Jerusalem related at this point in the negotiations. Yeah. The Israelis withdrew unilaterally from Gaza. They still control entry and exit. But there, there are no settlements there anymore. There's no territorial dispute anymore. They're out of there. So the issue is much more about what the borders of the Palestinian state will be in the West Bank and, of course, in East Jerusalem. So it makes sense uh, to focus on those issues in the negotiations. Of course, the refugee issue has to be dealt with as well. But uh, Mahmoud Abbas, uh, Abu Mazen, has authority as the chairman of the PLO and it's the PLO that's negotiating with Israel, to negotiate those issues as well. So the question of where does Gaza come in can be dealt with later. And I think yes, at the, the same time, Tony Blair, when he was with us just recently, mm -hmm. was saying, you know, there is no two-state solution unless, unless Gaza is involved, oh, I, or I, a three-state solution. That's absolutely right. But the, I think that the logic of the, of, of the negotiating process is that if the negotiators can actually make progress on these issues of borders in the West Bank, Jerusalem, refugees. That will create a momentum that Hamas, controlling Gaza, will find itself under considerable pressure to find a way to get into these negotiations rather than trying to sabotage them with terrorism, which is what they're doing now. And, and, and that's the way, politically, that Gaza may be uh, uh, dealt with. And what about the, the question of where, difficult, difficult thing to work out exactly, but where Benjamin Netanyahu exactly stands on some of these things. One, uh, one comment on your New York Times article said in passing, for a just peace serving the long-term interest of the US and ironically of the Israels as well, was never their intent. Pleasing Israeli leaders and their slavish US supporters was. Oh, well. I, I can't tell you where where Bibi will end up. Uh, Netanyahu is a, uh, a pragmatic uh, mm. politician, mm. but he's a right-wing politician. He has a right-wing government coalition that's pulling him, in, in effect, away from mm. the negotiating table because they don't really support the whole idea of a two-state solution with the establishment of an independent Palestinian state in the area of the West Bank and Jerusalem that they consider Israel's by right. So, so the question is uh, really about who, who is Netanyahu. Uh, he has endorsed the two-state solution. He has said to Abu Mazen, you are my partner in peace. He said to him publicly at the State Department a couple of weeks ago that you, Abu Mazen, need security, need, excuse me, need sovereignty, and I need security, and we have to reconcile the two. Well, that's the heart of the two-state two deal is Palestinian sovereignty and uh, Israeli security. And that's what the negotiators have to work out. So we will see. We cannot know whether when the critical moment comes, when the United States puts the bridging proposals forward and, and the two leaders have to decide whether Netanyahu will decide for peace. I'm not sure that he knows that. The mm. challenge of this process is to get them to the point where they have to decide. And the skeptics are fine. You know, it's, it's easy to be skeptical about this. There's plenty of reason for skepticism. But what I say is let's just suspend disbelief and test these two leaders and see whether they now have the courage and the conviction to make the deal. Sunday is when the hold on settlements 
building more settlements, etc., comes to an end. Mm. And as we know at that point, if it doesn't uh, get renewed, Abu Mazen has said that the talks are over, I'm off. Right. Um, what is going to be the situation on Sunday night? Right, and of course Netanyahu is declaring that he will not yeah. renew it. So we have a crisis yes. in these, the, in these days. Crisis. And, and, and the, if, if they don't find a way of sorting it out by Sunday or Monday, um, because things always take a little longer in the Middle East, uh, then uh, the negotiations will in effect have collapsed almost before they've started. Uh, and and we have therefore the first real test. I don't think either leader wants these negotiations to collapse. Abu Mazen would be handing a victory to Hamas, who say there's no chance that these negotiations can succeed. And Hamas is his arch rival. Netanyahu will be blamed, whatever the reality is, he will be blamed for the, for the negotiations breaking down because of the the settlement enterprise is no longer legitimate. Uh, and, and especially not in the United States, and even within the American Jewish community, there's a real doubt about the whole settlement enterprise. So I think that both leaders have an interest in finding a yeah. way out of this crisis. And for God, God knows, President Obama and, and Secretary of State Clinton have an intense interest in finding a way out of this. Otherwise, it'll, it'll, it'll be a uh, blow up uh, in their faces uh, at a delicate time in in politics in Washington. So I think that that somehow, I can't tell you, it's a mystery as to how they're going to resolve this. Yes. But I think the interests of all the parties leads leads to more likely that they'll find a way through it. Martin, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. And I'm joined now by Mustafa Baghouti, the former Palestinian presidential candidate and a leading Palestinian advocate. Um, you heard what Mr. Indik had to say there. Um, both about Gaza and about what will happen on Sunday. What were your reflections as you heard that? Well, I think this whole theory is wrong, that you have to keep Hamas and the rest of the Palestinian political spectrum away from the participation. And uh, when you get results, they will just get involved. I mean, that's, uh, in my opinion, misleading and incorrect. First of all, uh, these negotiations are happening while the vast majority of Palestinians, both inside occupied territories and outside the occupied territories, uh, are against. Uh, most political forces, even forces inside the PLO, the allies of Mr. Abbas, are also against the, the way negotiations are happening. Not because we are against peace or against negotiations. On the contrary, because we don't want these negotiations to kill the very last opportunity for peace based on two-state solution. The very simple formula here is as follows. You cannot have negotiations while Israel continues to build settlements on the ground. It's like having two sides negotiating over a piece of cheese. One side is prevented from reaching it and can only talk, which is the Palestinian side. And the other side, the Israeli side, is eating it up. By the end of a year, nothing will be left. Uh, in my opinion, what's happening today, because there is no real freeze of settlements, and even this partial freeze, which excludes Jerusalem and 15% of the West Bank and big parts of the settlements, this partial freeze is not even going to be renewed. This means that the settlements are going to undermine any potential and possibility for making conclusions. What we need here is complete and total freeze of settlements and clear terms of reference. Today, the veto is in the hand of Israel. Israel can decide whether the issue of Jerusalem will be negotiated or not, the issue of refugees will be discussed or not, and that is not acceptable. What we but, but need uh, me, is clear terms of reference for these negotiations. You're very clear, but just one point about why, why are you saying that, I mean, in a situation, in a two-party situation like this, surely you're saying Israel has a veto, but the Palestinians have a veto too, don't they? Yeah, but the Palestinians are the ones who are under occupation. They want to get rid of occupation, and Israel is occupying us. What I'm trying to say is that these negotiations, in the absence of strong intervention from the international community, in the absence of an impartial mediator, and in the absence of terms of reference based on international law and, uh, and uh, UN resolutions, Palestinians are, are uh, hostage to Israeli will. 
Of course, Palestinians want to discuss all the issues. They want to get rid of occupation. But the Israelis are the ones who are occupying us, and they are given the right to say, we don't want to discuss ending occupation of Jerusalem. We don't want to discuss the issue of the rights of refugees. It's an, an unequitable formula. That's why there is a big uh, risk of failure here. And, and in, but in this situation, you would like, it would seem from what you're saying, um, uh, Mustafa, that you would like these talks to come to an end on Sunday? No, what I would like to say is that we do not want a continuation of what we have had for 17 years, where the peace process itself has become a substitute to peace. <laughs> it's like the international community has become addicted to this peace process. They, all they need is an injection of a peace process from time to time, and we are running from one failure to another. Oslo was a failure, Camp David was a failure, and then Annapolis was a failure. Do we need another failure? Meanwhile, Israel is using these negotiations as a cover. They are using it as they are using the time to finish the building of facts on the ground, which is nothing but an apartheid system where the whole idea of statehood is transformed into clusters of pantostans and ghettos. We need a different peace process. We need a different approach to peace where all Palestinians would be included within a unified leadership on democratic basis and not the majority of them are excluded. And we need a peace process based on international law and with a clear term, uh, time frame and with a determination of international community to tell Israel you cannot negotiate while you are building settlements because one thing negates the other, either peace or settlements. If we have that, maybe we will have a, a productive peace process. But I cannot cheat myself and cheat my people and convince them to accept a process that I can see will either fail or will lead to a disaster in terms of the interest of the Palestinian people. So what would you like to happen on Sunday night? You would like the talks to end, wouldn't you? I, no, I, uh, this is not my aim. The, my aim is not that the talks would end or not end. What I want is more than Sunday. I want that settlements would stop growing. The partial deal, the partial uh, freeze that they are talking about is excluding Jerusalem. That's 15% of the West Bank. It is excluding government building inside settlements. It is excluding thousands of units that have already been started and that Israel can continue to build even when they have a freeze. And even this freeze is going to be uh, minimized more. I think what I want, what I want to see is a total and complete freeze of settlement activities. What I want to see is that President Obama would fulfill his promise that he made in Cairo more than a year ago and tell Israel, abide by the roadmap and stop settlement building. And here are the terms of reference, occupation must end. And this would be the outcome of these negotiations. Then I would fullheartedly support negotiations and I would be the first to be pleased if they succeed. Well, that's very clear. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Mustafa. Um, we'll come back to you if these peace talks are alive or not alive in a few weeks' time to see where your words have come to. We thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Let's see what happens. Thanks. Thank you, David. Absolutely. Take care. Absolutely. And you. And you. Well, that's it for this week, so do join me and uh, Gina Davis and Pervez Musharraf and much more besides in seven days' time for another Crossed Over the World.